We just made this four foot gnome sweet gnome porch leaner and it's priced to sell. We'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week, so be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell to be notified of our new videos each week. This week, the customer is always right and they are demanding some front porch leaners. <laughs> kind of, yes. At our workshops here lately, we've had, what, three or four in a row? Yeah. Where someone has said, do you guys do workshops on these? Which is our vertical porch leaners. So we knew we had to create a new vertical porch leaner workshop. We had some back in December, but we only had a couple of participants at those. So I think spring is it. It's that time of year. So we're gonna make us a new spring porch leaner this week. And this is a great project to make if you make crafts to sell. If you're gonna sell these at a farmer's market, they're, they have a great profit margin and they sell really well. So I think we can yeah. do both with it. We can do workshops and we can take it to the craft shows. I think so too. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We needed a one by 12 by four foot because there's a four foot porch leaner. Typically we make a six foot porch leaner and we use our fence pickets, but we found that those are a little cumbersome for us to bring to craft shows. So we're gonna try these four foot leaners for a bit. So you can still use your fence pickets to make these. I would just cut them down a little bit, but we had this on hand, so we're gonna use this one by 12. It's just as easy. Six foots also take up a bit more room when we're trying to hold workshops. You fit less yes. people at a table when you're using the six Yes. Foot. This board is like, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. <laughs> we needed some quarter inch MDF. This is what we're gonna cut the top pieces out of. This is what our gnome and words are gonna be cut out of. We also needed some paint, some rollers, some wood glue. Some wood glue. We're gonna use a little of our star bond where we're gluing MDF to MDF. But if we're gluing pieces straight to our wood board, we're gonna use the wood glue. It's a little bit cheaper. Step two, we're gonna make all of our cuts. I'm gonna bring the quarter inch MDF over to our OmTech desktop polar laser, and we're gonna cut this out. I'll meet you over in Lightburn. Here we are in Lightburn. We're going to import our SVG. Now this comes in in three sections. Everything is selected. We're gonna hover over the center, drag this down so that the first section is on our cut board. We're gonna highlight just that section. We're gonna change our settings. Blue for us is always score, so we're gonna change that speed to 200. And we're going to change max power to 25. Cut is red, so we're gonna change that speed to 7.5, max power to 70. We're gonna set min power to 70 as well. We wanna keep it consistent. Then we're gonna go ahead and frame it. Well, we're gonna put a board in there first. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's add our board first. Now we framed it, we're gonna hit start. So with light burn, it cuts in layer order. So you notice that the blue layer was on top, so it's gonna score everything first. The red layer was next, so then it'll cut everything in the red layer second. We're gonna add our second board. We're gonna slide the whole thing to the left and now everything for the second cut is in our cut area. We'll frame it and hit start. For this one, we really didn't need the camera as much because the cuts really fit well on the board. You can really see if it's in the cut area. We don't need the precision of the camera. And these cuts look beautiful. This cuts like butter. Like butter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your own personal parrot, Kim. Yeah, my hype man. All right, we're aligning the third section. We'll put our board in. We'll frame it. 
Same settings for the score and the cut. We'll just frame and hit start. Step three, it's time to paint. We're gonna paint our one by 12 black. We're gonna start by painting that one. And we are using our exterior house paint. So this one by 12 is not pressure treated. The, the nice thing about using the pickets is they are pressure treated and meant for outdoors. This really isn't meant for outdoors, but if you have a covered porch, this is gonna be just fine sitting outside, especially sealed with this exterior house paint. So, one of the things we do uh, to kind of keep costs down is reuse our rollers. We save them in little baggies. We use just regular old kitchen um, Ziploc zip baggies. Sandwich bags. This happens to be some ones that we had for something else, but I love how small they are. They're the perfect size, but they're not as affordable as just your regular old sandwich bags. So we also can use these and put our little rollers in without having to get our hands messy by just popping up the top, a little hole on top here, putting our handle on, and we are ready to go. No fuss, no mess. <laughs> and then for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze the paint right onto the board and paint from there. We have all of our little MDF pieces that are cut out. We'll do these next. I am going to finish both sides of this board. Ooh, I'll move your paint. Do the old moving paint. An old moving an paint. Old moving paint. I'm not even going to do this with an apron. That's how confident Ooh, I am. Ooh, that's pro level. <laughs> that's pro level. <laughs> Actually, I would recommend an apron. It's like Evil Knievel without a helmet right there. <laughs> All right, I can see I got overzealous with the paint. There's, I pulled a Garrett. I've got too much paint. You went in too deep. Here, I'll turn it over and hold it. All right, go ahead. Okay. Do you need more paint on that roller? <clears throat> I need a little more paint. There you go, I got you. Right back over. All right, you all full? Back over. <laughs> It's working out great. <laughs> Not very efficient, but it's working. Yeah, this isn't the most efficient way to paint the board. Ooh. You almost jinxed yourself with your no uh, schmuck comment. See, this is this is team painting right here. It's team painting. Yeah, we're gonna enter the team painting of it. Now, before, are you just Doubles. gonna hold it up? Are you just gonna hold it up? You want me to do the sides and then do the back in a minute? Yeah, I'll just hold it. We'll do like the whole thing. Strategic. <laughs> what are those little diamond things? This is the most inefficient way to paint, but it will get the job done. Let me unswitch my hands. Ready? I cannot. Oh, you oh. cannot stop it. <laughs> I feel like there's a circus painting right I here. Feel, it is a little bit of circus painting. Maybe this is efficient because. We didn't have to wait for Look one at me. side yeah, to dry. Yeah, I did both sides at one time. Now I am a little so, bit worried. Pro tip of the day, grab a partner and make them hold the other side for you. <laughs> pro tip, do it, do it in doubles. <laughs> you do doubles painting. I can painting. get two done in the time of one. Oh, we're gonna go. Oh, almost got <laughs> Look you. Look at you, don't, don't jinx me. Go get you. Go get wait, you. Wait, you got my hand. <laughs> like, <Hey>. Pretty good. <laughs> Flip it up, come on, come on. Flip what up? I want to get the other side. Oh, this side? Yeah. I thought you were going to finish this back end here. I am, I got to get more paint over there, but I have enough to do the sides. I don't like it too easy. Ooh, I barely got any on the paper. Really close to my hands. Oh, <laughs> oof. oof, might be too much. Think about these FIFO bottles, it's a really great you're splish store, splashing me over here. To store your paint in, but sometimes you just cannot get the perfect pour out. I sometimes do way too much. When you give them those Hulkamania squeezes, that's a problem. <laughs> oh, my arm's tired. 
<laughs> you got your arms tired. <laughs> you got your tired? <laughs> Is it burning? Nah, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Right, get this top part over here. You purposely bumped my knuckles. I'm not, what am I supposed to do? I had to get all the way to the end. We're doing like paint roller fist bumps. Okay. All right. And I don't have either. Wait, uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh-uh, what? All right, yeah, but I'm gonna grab it this way. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, this is, this maybe, is danger maybe, painting. Maybe tag team painting isn't the best way. All right, I'll go set this aside. All right. Well, I gotta oh. get the, I'm sorry, I gotta get the top and the bottom. What does that mean? Where well, your hands are. Then I won't be able to put it down. I'll come back. Yeah. Make sure you seal the top. <clears throat> Step three and a half. And a half. We're still painting, but we're going to paint all of our little MDF pieces now. Using the same roller technique. No, not using that same roller technique. <laughs> well, not, not as deep as that last one, but... <laughs> Similar roller technique. We will technique. not be tag teaming this <laughs> this round. You don't want me to hold this each This round will be a singular Here, round, single you. person round. All right, get it. Yeah. Roll it. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what we were last time. That was definitely a circus show. All right. So here we're gonna add a little what we call our sticky tape palette here. Um, I just made that up. Ooh, sticky, sticky tape palette. <laughs> so we're just laying a few uh, pieces of tape face up, sticky side up, taping them down at the top and the bottom so we can add our little pieces to it. So when we roll them, oh, they, don't, they don't move. We can just roll right over them and I can paint multiples at one time. So when we actually do use the rollers correctly, we use a paper plate. <laughs> And we don't put the paint directly in the middle. We don't give it a good squirt in the middle. We do put it at the top of the plate, whatever the top may be on a circle. Pick a top. And then we just grab a little bit down and try to get a nice even spread on the roller. Maybe not in your hand like that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe on a flat That's all surface. part of that circus <laughs> trick day. It's circus day here at K&G Labs. Nice even coat on there, nothing too goopy. And just give it some white rolls. Now with this yellow, I'm probably gonna need several coats. I'm probably gonna need to put this I think some you tape. should, yeah, tape that down. This takes a little setup. Usually when you're painting one of our kits, it patience is a virtue here. You just wanna take a few minutes to set up, separate by color and that's gonna make your painting much faster. You'll be able to put multiple coats on there. It'll be done in no time. today and remember you can support us by going to our store at kngmakeit.com where we offer hundreds of kits, SVGs, all of the supplies we use and paints. Step four. Time to assemble. We're going to use some wood glue to glue these little MDF pieces to the wood but then we're going to use some Starbond super glue to glue the pieces together like any MDF pieces. Yeah, that you have. MDF to MDF, we'll use Starbond. MDF to the wood backer, we'll use wood glue. Right. Wish you That's said. it. We'll start by laying it out, make sure we know where everything's gonna go, and then we'll flip it over and glue it and flip it right back into place. Last coat of paint made it too thick. Whoever did that last coat. <laughs> How about that first coat? The first
first coat was nearly perfect. Whoever did that last coat. That was that last coat. Step five, profit. This is a whopping $42 in profit right here. Oh, $42 an hour. Yeah, That's what I consider. Yeah, dollars an hour. Yeah. That's not a bad chunk of change. <laughs> We've been giving Garrett a hard time for saying chunk of change. <laughs> and I think at four foot, it's a nice size. It's a manageable size. We'll be able to take them to the craft shows a little easier. People will be able to take them from the craft show a little bit easier. Oh yeah, that was the other problem when they left the workshop for the six foot one. She, she was like, I don't think I can get this in my car. Yeah. So this will be a little, this will be an easier travel. Yeah, this one will fit in someone's trunk. No excuses. <laughs> no excuses. So we'll break down the costs on this one. Yep, so all in on materials is about $23. It was 13 for the one by 12. And it was about, what, seven or eight for the MDF and then the rest was paints. We just guessed. So yeah. like two or three bucks. Well, three dollars for the paints is what yeah. I said. But, you know, we talked about doing the pickets, so the pickets are still an option. Pickets right now in our area for the premium pickets are four dollars each. So that's eight dollars for the two pickets. And then the cross braces that go on the back, that's a two dollar picket. So that's about ten dollars. So if you use pickets, they are pressure treated exterior pickets. So that's one plus. Plus they're a little bit cheaper, yeah, I mean, saves like there's plus $3. And minuses. So you're coming in at $13 for this one board, or you come in at $10 on the other one and put in a little elbow grease. Yes, but for our workshops, I think we're gonna just go with this because um, I think it saves them a little bit of time. There's gonna be enough time for them to paint this kit. We can paint yeah. this kit pretty quickly. We can do it in 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Yeah, so the total. cut time was about 30 minutes. It actually came in just under 30 minutes. And then the paint was about 20 minutes. And then to assemble it was about another 10. So all in for an hour. And they sell in our area for about $65. So, so yeah. that's where we got our $42 from. Now, if you're going to count your own time and your laser's time, you know, it might be a little more expensive. We right. We have our little pricing calculator. If you remember, we did a video, Pricing Crafts to Sell, and we have a little pricing calculator on our website. If you go to the little search bar, kngmakeit.com, go to the search bar, type in calculator, you'll see pricing calculator. And for that, we typed in material costs of $23. Labor costs, we did $15 an hour for the painter and then $15 per hour for our laser, which we only calculated at 750 because it was a half an hour. Uh, I did a 50% profit margin. That puts our total cost at 45.50, profit at 22.75, and the new price, sales price here, was calculated at 68.25. We are saying 65, so we're in the ballpark. We'll eat some of that labor cost. Yeah. But I think if we're chunking these out, and doing them in batches, maybe five or six at a time, we can get that labor cost down. Yeah, and you could probably paint one while one's cutting. So yeah. that's nice and easy too. And we are about out of time. So if you're not gonna join us over on Patreon where we have a bunch of extra content, free SVGs, a monthly Zoom call where we get to meet you, and most importantly, the after show. So if you're not going to join us for the after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. Uh -oh. And I like these little it's four It's been a minute. Yeah, you haven't had much to balance lately. <laughs> way easier to balance. They don't hit the roof. No, no hitting the ceiling with this little guy right here. Look at him. He is so cute. I am very happy with him. Whoa! Oh. You almost gave him a smooch. <laughs>